In this week's episode, I decided to challenge myself and I wanted to shoot an entire video with only one camera and one camera lens. I hope you enjoy. We are not here to fit in, be well balanced, or provide an example for others. In contrast, we are here to be eccentric, different, perhaps strange. Merely adding a small piece of our little clunky, chunky selves to the great mosaic of life. As the universe intended, we are here to become more and more ourselves. I just want to give a quick shout out to Caleb Grady and say thank you so much for helping me shoot this week's episode. And I want to thank so many other people for helping me make these videos because without you, this video channel and a lot of this content wouldn't exist. So thank you. To provide a little bit of context for this week's episode, one of my very favorite lenses and some of my very favorite photos I've ever taken have been on super telephoto lenses. And in my mind's eye, this lens really lends itself to pulling out details in wider scenes and I've always wanted to use it in these videos. However, I've shied away from it because so much of the content that I shoot on this channel is handheld. And when you're zooming in really close, a small movement or micro jitter is really jarring when you're zoomed in super close. And so it's kept me from wanting to use this lens um, because I, it requires me for best use case scenarios to, to use a tripod. and. That just slows me down further and so I haven't been using it for that reason but Ben Hartman's channel here on YouTube has really reignited the love for this lens and if you haven't seen his channel please do yourself a favor and watch some of his content it's incredible but in combination with him and YC Imaging who did a video of why YouTube content doesn't look like Hollywood cinema it really reignited this desire to use this lens. And in YC's video, he talks a lot about lighting and situational awareness around lighting and focal lengths and aperture. And in his video, the thing that really stood out to me was that 
Hollywood DPs are using focal lengths that are a lot longer, but they're using apertures starting at 5.6 and sometimes going much beyond that into the f8, f10 range, and using additional light to augment what's going on inside the camera. And so the longer focal length allows that background separation, that nice blur that we find so beautiful to still happen, but because he's, they're using apertures that are much higher than that f2.8 range that I find myself always falling prone to, um, there's just a lot wider focal kind of plane. And so it allows the DP to keep their subject in focus and tack sharp much easier. And I find myself falling prey to feeling like I always have to shoot at f2.8 or f4 because that's what looks cinematic. And so that's kept me from wanting to use this lens as well because the aperture range on this lens starts at 5.6. And so in my mind, I was like, ah, oh, it won't even look nice. Um, last but not least, the other reason I haven't been using this lens has been for the ND filter because I've always wanted to shoot with a shallow depth of field. <sighs> that means that you have to have sunglasses for your lens because I shoot in the middle of the day. And so uh, with kayaking, it very seldomly do you shoot at night with kayaking. So I need these variable ND filters to limit the amount of light that's passing through my lens. And for a 95 millimeter thread, that's very expensive. And so much so that I don't own one. So um, those are all reasons why I haven't used the lens. But in this week's video, after kind of listening to YC's advice on things that I could be doing, I decided to give it a go. And this week we had incredible light. And there was this incredible backlighting that was happening at Minibus. And I was able to use this lens in combination with a really fast shutter speed and shooting at 120 frames per second to really show off the light streaks coming across and I really wanted the detail to be super tack sharp so that's why I you know, really dialed in a fast shutter speed so that it would look almost unrealistic <laughs> uh, and uh, almost unnaturally sharp. And then I still wanted to be able to show off the speed and movement of the water and so I then kind of move back to 24 frames per second and then I use the 180 degree rule which is to double your frame your frame rate should be double um, or excuse me your shutter speed should be double your frame rate so I was in at 1 50th of a second on my Sony camera and because I don't have a variable ND filter to keep the image from being overexposed I actually had to use an f22 uh, aperture and that was wild looking to my eye it looked very unnatural um, but I really like how that content looked and I was very happy with the last uh, kind of few images that we were able to pull out of the day as the light got lower and lower and so ultimately what this did is it made me be creative in a very different way and it also allowed me to kind of push myself out of my comfort zone and so I hope that you like this content and if you did please consider giving it a big thumbs up if you have any comments for me leave them down in the comments below and if you haven't subscribed to the channel please consider doing so but until next week I'm going to leave you with some more images of some other incredible paddlers out on minibus and we'll see you next week